Hello friends, thank you for watching this video. I am Muhammad and today we're going to be discussing something really interesting. We're going to be seeing how we can actually containerize our web API. We're going to be seeing how we can connect to Postgres running on a container as well. We're going to be seeing how we can connect them, both of them, utilizing Docker Compose, how we can do the configuration, do the networking between them, so on and so forth. If you like this video, please like, share and subscribe. It will really help the channel. As well, if you'd like to support me, please consider supporting me on Patreon or buying me a coffee. Now, grab your cup of coffee and let's get started. So before we actually get started, we want to understand one thing here. So currently, whenever we run our web application or our web API, it's running actually inside our machine. And in order for us to deploy this, we can actually just publish it and upload it to the server. But in order for us to make our application much more, much more agile, in order for us to make our application much more easier for us to manage on the long run and to have a, such a, a continuous deployment process, CI/CD pipelines, it's always better to have it running inside a container. And in order for us to do that, what we need to do is we need to containerize our application. And to achieve this, we're going to be utilizing Docker. And Docker basically is a tool where we're actually able to create a, a publish, a, a production version of our application that runs directly. And basically what happens here is we're going to be able to publish our application into uh, an application a file, which is going to be called a Docker image. And whenever we need to run it anywhere within the world that can, that able to support Docker, we're just going to take a copy of that image and run it directly. And the nice thing about it is within that Docker image, all of the information that we need in order for our application to run, it's going to be there, all of the configuration, all of the libraries, all of the dependencies, everything is going to be there. If you want to learn more about Docker, I have a video here somewhere where I'm going to be linked, where I'll dive more deep about Docker and how it works. But for now, we're just going to be basically trying to go on a high level on all of the, these different topics in order for us to understand what's, what we're doing. But again, if you have any questions, please feel free to put them in the comments down below. So now, again, let's get started. So the first thing that we're going to be doing is we're going to be seeing some of the software that we need to install on our machine in order for us to run Docker. As well, we're going to be seeing the SDK and maybe as well the code editor that we're going to be utilizing. So here, as we can see, I'm utilize, I went to the Docker website. So all you need to go is to go to Google, type Docker downloads, and they're going to get to this website. And once you go to this, download uh, the Docker desktop based on your own uh, machine type. And once you do that, make sure that you log into Docker. Uh, just an easy way for uh, for you to keep track of all of your container if you want to push them to uh, Docker Hub. And on the, the other ones that we need is basically we're going to be needing a .NET SDK. So you can go here and you can basically download the .NET SDK based on your own machine as well. And we're going to be utilizing uh, Visual Studio Code. And you can download it as well. It's a free uh, code editor that you can actually utilize. So once you have all of this downloaded, we're going to be basically opening up our terminal. Once we actually have our terminal open, we're going to be checking which version of the .NET SDK that we're, gonna, we're having. So we're going to put .NET dash dash version. And as you can see here, I am on the latest version, which is going to be 7.0.102. Uh, so once we have done that, the other thing that I need to do is uh, once you have installed Docker Desktop, if you want to check if it's actually working, on the top right hand side, you're going to be able to see like a small wheel icon. And once you open it up, you're going to be seeing on top that Docker Desktop is running. You should see a green uh, bubble next to it. As well, if you open up uh, the dashboard, let's open up the dashboard. You're going to be able to see it here as well as uh, a green icon or, and it says engine is running, which is exactly what you want. So now that we have that open, all we need to do right now is just go and create our web, app web application. So we're going to go to desktop, work, learning, uh, .NET, and let's create a folder called container. Containers. And inside this containers folder, uh, let's create a web application. Let's, um, let's make a .NET new web API. We'll call it uh, dash name, call it demo app, and that should be it. So now if we go to demo app and we can open it up. Okay, now that we have opened up Visual Studio Code, so now that we have created our application, now it's time for us to install some packages, uh, which is going to be allowing us to connect our uh, web API into Postgres. So let's open up Terminal within Visual Studio Code. 
And let's make this a bit bigger. Okay, that looks good. And here, what we're gonna put is gonna put dot nut add package Microsoft dot entity framework core dot tools. So that's gonna be the first package that we're gonna be installing. Perfect. Now the second one is gonna be dot nut add package npsql dot entity framework core dot postgres okay perfect uh, now let's check if it has been installed successfully if we go to our demo app the cs pros we should be able to see both of them and we only have one uh, let's try it again maybe i mistyped something dot not dot add package dot np sql and dot entity framework core entity oh i mistyped framework still entity framework core dot postgres okay uh, let's just check it out in google maybe i missed some of my typo so just go to NuGet and let's see what we're going to be getting. Let's zoom in and I'm just going to copy this and let's put it here. Okay, so it's installed. Let's see what the difference was, just out of curiosity. Oh, I forgot the G. Okay, that's fine. So now that I have uh, installed it, let's double check if it's installed successfully. And now we can see that it has been installed successfully, which is great. And the next step for us is inside our root directory, I'm gonna be creating a folder. And this folder is, we're gonna call it models. And inside the models folder, what I'm gonna be doing is I'm gonna be actually creating my uh, database model that I'm gonna be utilizing in, uh, that, uh, within my Postgres. So I'm gonna create first my model that I'm gonna create my API DB context. And then once that API DB context is created successfully, and uh, I'm gonna be creating the first migration script, but I'm not gonna be implementing it because my database server is not existing yet. I'm gonna be needing until I create my Docker Compose file. And then once I create my Docker Compose file, I'm gonna be able to actually connect to my Postgres. But for now, because I don't have Postgres available, I will not be able to do anything. So let's get started. So now what I'm going to be doing is inside my models folder, I'm going to just create a new uh, class. I'm going to call it the driver.cs. And here I'm just going to put the namespace first. And I'm just going to say demo app.models. And then we're going to put public class driver. It's going to be a very simple one. So we're just going to prop int id. And then we're going to just put the name of the driver. So it's going to be a string name uh, let's make it not null and then lastly i'm just going to put my driver number okay that's going to be the simple model that i'm going to have and this is going to be representative of our table at the moment and once i have done that inside my root directory again i'm going to be getting a folder called data and i'm going to create inside of it a db context a class so i'm going to say api db context And now that I have created my API DB context, the next step is again, need to create the namespace and then create and initialize my class. So namespace, uh, demo app, dot data, public class, API DB, oops, DB context. And I'm going to be inheriting from the DB context class, which basically I have access to it because I have installed the entity framework core packages. So once I have done that, let's fix those references here. Okay, perfect. Now I need to create my constructor. We're going to put constructor. And here all I'm going to be doing is just pass the DB context options. And it's going to take the API DB context. And it's going to be options. And we're going to pass this to base class. 
Okay, perfect. And now once I have created this, I'm just gonna uh, uh, initialize my table. So I'm gonna put public db set, and it's gonna be the driver table that I have. And I'm gonna call the table drivers, and just as to uh, get it on a setter. And let's fix those references here. Okay, perfect. And now all we need to do is just do a dot not build, make sure we're not messing anything up. Build succeeded exactly what we want. And now once we have done all of that, uh, what we need to do right now is we need to actually inject our DB contacts into our program.cs. And once we inject our DB contacts into our uh, program.cs, uh, we're going to be basically injecting our connection string as well, so it will be able to actually utilize it. But for the sake of this application, uh, we're going to put a, like a, a representative or like a, a placeholder for our connection string because our connection string is going to be dynamically uh, propagated through our Docker Compose file. So the main goal here is we're going to make the connection string dynamically available for our application rather than being hard-coded inside our app settings. So in order for us to do that, we're going to be basically just creating like a placeholder inside our app settings, which is going to be referring to from our uh, start topic, oh, sorry, from our program.cs class. But once we create our Docker Compose file, uh, that Docker Compose file is going to inject automatically the connection string that we're going to be needing for our web API into the application. So inside our uh, app setting.json, here we're just going to create a new section where the MS called connection strings, and we're going to just create our default connection. We're going to leave it empty for now. And that should be it uh, from here. And then we're going to go to our program.cs and we're going to start adding the injection here. So first of all, we're going to create var. This is going to be the connection string that we're going to be reading and it's going to go to builder.configuration.getConnectionStrings. And here all we're going to say is going to get the default connection. Let's just copy paste it. Okay, perfect. And now we need to basically initialize our uh, DB contacts. So also it's going to be very simple. We're going to put builder dot services dot add DB context, and then here we're going to specify which DB context API DB context. And then once we have done that, we're going to specify the options. And I'm just going to say let's put another new line. Options dot services actually options dot not service dot use and b g sql which is going to be for our uh, uh for our postgres and here i'm just going to pass the connection string and let's fix those references and this is the first reference and this is going to be the second reference okay perfect again just for make sure everything is running dot not build Okay, great. So now what, the, what we have done so far, we basically created a model. We created our API DB context. We created an empty connection string because we're not going to be, be hard coding it. Uh, we updated our program.cs in order for it to refer to this. And then basically we injected our API DB context inside our uh, program.cs. So it's available for, across the application. So now what we're going to be doing is we're going to be creating an empty, uh, the first migration which is going to be responsible for creating the database. And once we do that, we're basically uh, able to, uh, uh, once we create our database server, to actually uh, update the database server with all of the information that we need, which is exactly what we want. Uh, this is the first thing. The second thing that we need to do here is uh, we need to actually uh, to uh, make sure that uh, that our migration script is actually generating correctly. So, okay, so now in order for us to create the migration, we're just going to put .NET EF migrations add, and we're going to call it initial migration. And enter. Okay, perfect. So now all I'm going to be seeing here is I have a new folder, which is called migrations. And if I open it up and I check here, basically what I see, I have my initial migration here. And then basically I can see that I have my table drivers and here I can see that I have my ID, which is going to be the primary key, as we can see here. And we have my name and then we have my driver. And as we can see, we can, it's not notable, the name. Okay, great. So once we have done that, 
the next step for us is to create our uh, controller. So let's create our controller now. So inside the controllers folder, we're going to be creating a new file. And we're going to call it the drivers. Oops. Drivers controller dot cs and it's going to be pretty straightforward so again uh can you let's copy this all of this and we'll update it so to, 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 we don't really need this so we'll remove this let's update the name of this controller so instead of further forecast we're going to call it drivers controller and let's update the logger here and let's update the constructor and that should be it we don't really need this we're going to be created our own uh, let's see right now okay perfect so now that we have uh, uh, cleaned up our uh, controller that we basically we have copy pasted from somewhere else uh, what we're going to be doing is we're just going to be creating a single endpoint uh, this is just a demonstration of course if you're going to have a full fledged application you're going to have a full cloud operation but just for simplicity's sake, we're just going to be creating one endpoint, which is going to be the get endpoint. And while we're going uh, a get, we're just going to be adding a record to our database. Again, this is all for demo purposes. In the real life scenario, we need to create a full fledged of the CRUD uh, actions for your controller in order for you to have the full functionality. But for now, this is uh, uh, for just for demo purposes. So first of all, what we're going to be doing is we want to inject the uh, API DB context. So I'm going to put private read only API DB context and uh, I'm just going to say context it's going to ask me to fix those references and then I'm going to inject it here so it's going to be API DB context context and then it's going to be underscore context equal context so now that we have injected it the next step is for me to start creating my action and this is going to be very simple i'm just going to put http get and i'm going to give it a name and let's say we're going to call it get all drivers pretty straightforward oops so once i have created uh once I, uh once i've created this here i'm just going to be uh, creating the function itself which is going to be public async task I action result get not gonna take anything and from here all I'm gonna put just uh, so the first thing is as we said I'm just gonna be creating a driver and and then we're gonna just basically get it so it's a very simple uh, endpoint so I'm gonna put var driver equal a new driver let's fix these references and here the id is going to be auto generated so the driver number we're just going to say it's going to be 44 and the driver name is going to be sir lewis hamid okay perfect so now that we have done that the next step is we're just going to be adding it to our context so we're just going to say await actually it's going to be underscore context dot add and we're just going to add the driver and then we're just going to say await underscore contacts dot save changes async because we're going to be saving these into the database. And now once we have done that, we're just going to get all of the drivers. And we're going to say var all drivers equal underscore contacts dot actually let's make it as an await underscore contacts dot drivers dot uh, to list async. Okay, and now let's fix these references. And lastly, what we're going to be doing here is just going to be returning it. So I'm going to return OK with all drivers. Again, this is not the, the way to do it, but again, it's all for demo purposes. So all I have done here is whenever I call just to populate the database and I don't have to create an entire set of actions, I don't have to create a full migration on startup. I just basically, uh, I'm just adding random people to the database whenever I'm calling the get function. So <clears throat> now that we have done that, uh, the next step for me is to actually start creating my uh, Docker file. So again, uh, 
before we actually create a docker file here i just want to explain one thing so if you don't know anything about docker uh, basically what happens is within docker is when creating a container or an image of our application is we're taking the source code we are publishing it we can imagine of it like uh, creating a program and sending it uh, and shipping it off to different people or basically to our customers so what we're doing here is we create uh, we're uh, the source code of our application right now that we have we're gonna publish it into like DLL files, which is gonna be like the end version. We're just gonna put it inside a container, which means like we're gonna put it inside a box that we can actually ship it anywhere we want and we can utilize it anywhere we want. And whenever, for example, we wanna have a version of our application running on the cloud, on our different machine, on a custom server, so on and so forth, we can just take this Docker, uh, Docker image that we have and run it. So it's a way to easily share the content between different servers, make sure it's, a very, it's, it's easy for us to up, keep updating our application as we go, so on and so forth. And in order for us to do that, we're gonna be needing a Docker file. And the Docker file here is gonna be basically like the instruction set in order for us to convert our source code uh, for the application into an actual uh, uh, Docker image that we're gonna be able to utilize. And that's what we're gonna be creating. So let's do it. So inside the root directory again, let's close these. Uh, before we do that, I'm just gonna do a dot not build, make sure everything is building. Okay, great. So inside the root directory, I'm just gonna create a new file, which is gonna be calling a docker file. Very simple. So the first thing here in order for me to create a docker file is I'm just gonna be specifying the base image. And the base image stand for here is what type of uh, requirement that I'm going to be needing in order for my application to start and to actually run. And because it's a .NET application, I'm going to be utilizing a .NET SDK. Uh, I have a different video which I'm going to be linking here somewhere where we, I'm, I'll dive more deep into the foundation of Docker and how it works and how the base image works so on and so forth. So if you're interested, I'm sure I'm going to be linking it anywhere here. But uh, just for simplicity's sake, we can think about the base image as basically the foundation of all the libraries that we're going to be needing in order for .NET to actually able to run. So uh, we're going to say from, and uh, it's going to be from mcr.microsoft.com forward slash .NET forward slash SDK. We're going to be utilizing version 7, so this is going to be the latest version. And I'm going to say as build environment. Very simple. And if you're wondering where I got this from, so let me just uh, copy this and I'll show you exactly where I found this. So if we go back to my web browser and here I'm just gonna go to, uh, let's say google.com. Now let me just extract all, thank you. Uh, I'm just gonna say .NET, .NET SDK Docker Hub. And basically Docker Hub is a set of uh, it's a repository where you can find a lot of different images that you can actually utilize uh, within our application and basically microsoft provided for free so here you can see it's a .NET sdk provided by microsoft and here will give you the full url in order for you to utilize it and it's going to be the same thing that we have so we can see mcrmicrosoft.com forward slash .NET forward slash sdk uh, version 7.0 so now if i go back here uh, let me just copy paste it to make sure it's the same thing. And yep, it's the same one. Then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna create a work directory and I'm just gonna call it up and I'm gonna be exposing oops, expose oops expose port 80 as well I'm gonna be exposing port four four three. Okay, so let's see what's happening here. So inside my application, what I'm doing is uh, I took this uh, uh, I took this uh, base image, which is gonna be the main uh, uh, libraries that I need in order for me to run my .NET application. And once I took this base image, I created a folder inside of it. Was gonna be I'm telling it basically inside this folder, I'm gonna be putting all of my source code, which is gonna be run and build and create a new image for me. And then I told it that you're, because we're gonna be connecting to this uh, web application, I'm gonna told it that you're gonna be utilizing port 80 and port for normal HTTP and port 443 for HTTPS. So, but for now, for this application, I'm gonna be disabling HTTPS. So inside my program.cs, I'm just gonna disable this one for now. 
we can go into a different video where we can actually go through the uh, a different implementation of HTTPS within Docker, but that's not gonna be the, the topic of this video. So now that we have exposed this, the next step is we wanna copy all of our source code from our root directory into inside this container. So we're gonna just copy, uh, first of all, we need to copy the CS proj, sorry. And then I'm just gonna copy it to the root directory that I have, which is gonna be app. And once I do that, I'm just gonna run .NET restore. Okay, and what's that, what's happening right now? So what I'm doing is I'm just copying my main CS approach because it's gonna contain all of the NuGet packages that I need and basically all of the references for the .NET SDK. So once I copy it, I'm running a .NET restore. So in case there is any missing packages, I'll be first be notified on that there's something is not right when I'm doing the restore. Uh, it's always a good idea to do that before you copy your entire source code. That way, you basically break down the steps in order if there's any problems, you will be able to debug it uh, better. So once I run the .NET restore, the next step is I'm gonna copy the rest of my application to my uh, container. So basically when I put a dot here, I'm telling it to copy everything from my local file to my new container. Similarly here, I'm copying the CS flows from my local folder to this new folder here, which is called app. So once I have done that, I'm just gonna run .NET publish, we're gonna publishing the application. Let's see, we're gonna publish it in release mode. And I'm gonna be creating a folder called out, which we're gonna be publishing this release into it. Pub normal, similar to the normal uh, uh, .NET command that we can utilize within our terminal if we wanna publish our application, .NET publish, so on and so forth. Similarly, when we give this command to Docker, it will be able to pick it up and execute it uh, on top of our application inside that folder. So once we have done that, now what we're gonna be doing is we're gonna take and create a final build image. So I'm just gonna take this, and I don't need to call it anything. I can call it final environment whatever I want and once I have that I'm just gonna specify a new work directory again I'm gonna call it up and I'm just gonna copy from my first container to another so I'm gonna put from and it's not gonna be stage it's gonna be from build dash environment into forward slash app uh, sorry from uh, it's gonna be from app out to the root directory. So let's explain this command a bit in details. So what I did here is, so this is, I considered this first uh, image container that I have here is just like a development version, because basically what I want here is a, I'm, I'm going through the initial setup of just creating everything, like creating uh, my application, oh, sorry, copying my application, publishing it, making sure everything is running. And here, because it's not gonna be the final version, it's gonna contain the raw source code of my application, I'm gonna have a lot of stuff which is gonna make the image uh, size of my container really big. And because the image size of my container is gonna be really big, it's not gonna be really well optimized if I want to basically download it fast enough. So what I do here is I just take the published outcome of that. And why do I, uh, and you might think to yourself, okay, why can I just publish this outside the container and copy it in? And uh, the reason that we publish it inside a container and then inside an, an image and then push it into another image is because uh, uh, once we publish it within the image, all of the requirement that's needed for our application to run, it's gonna be uh, coming from that image itself. What I mean here is it's, it's gonna be relying on the SDK that lives inside that image. It's gonna be relying on all of the references from the dot, uh, dot .NET restore that we did inside that image. On the other hand, if we do it on our machine and publish it, we could have like a library on our machine which is installed, which is not available inside Docker, which could run our application to fail. We could have a dependency on any third party application that our machine will have, but inside the Docker image, uh, that uh, might need and it will also fail. So here we can see that we're gonna have two different environments. So our local machine development environment is gonna be completely different from the bare bone application uh, environment inside our image that we're building from. And because we wanna make sure that this application is gonna run in the best uh, performance possible as well, we're gonna match the exact same scenario every single time we run it. We don't want our uh, development machine environment to be copied. We want to actually have the Docker image uh, to be as minimal as possible and to have the same uh, configuration across. So it's always best to have it inside a Docker image and then copy the published out uh, from that uh, development or build environment image into the uh, the final final version of our image.
So that's why we're doing it. And the command to do this is quite simple. We're just telling it that you need to go to that first default image that we have. You need to look inside the folder forward slash up forward slash out, which is going to be the published section. Take everything there and just copy it to the root directory. And that's it. Because when we publish uh, an image, it will publish the full list of the LL with all of the dependencies and with all of the reference, which is, which is exactly what we want. So now that we have done this, the last thing that we need to do is just when I specify the entry point and the entry point mean here it's what is going to be executing when the uh, application start and basically we're going to be referring to the main DLL that the application is going to produce so let's delete all of this and I'm just going to say dot not and this is going to be the main uh, uh, command I'm just going to say run demo uh, Dot DLL. Very simple. So here what I have is uh, basically the Docker version of my application. And because I have this Docker version here, what I'm going to be doing is I'm going to build that image to see if it's actually built successfully. So let's try it out. And so inside my terminal here, I'm just going to type the Docker command, which is going to be responsible for creating this image for me. So here we're going to put just dot .NET run, actually dot .NET build dot uh, basically what it means first of all dot not is not the right word see yeah dot not is always on my mind so we're going to be utilizing the docker command line a tool in order for me to build this image so here we're going to put docker and then we're going to say we're going to build and then we're going to build what we're going to build uh, we're going to put a dot and dot here is going to look for a docker file inside the directory where i'm in so before we do that if i look at the directory sorry it's going to be ls if I look within the directory here, I have a Docker file, which is exactly what we want. So if when I put Docker build and I put dot, it's going to basically take this Docker file here. And what I'm going to be doing is, let's, let's do one thing here. So now I'm going to do a normal build. My Docker application is running, as we can see from the top right. And what we're seeing here is basically it's doing all of the builds. And we can see that it actually built it successfully. We can see that uh, writing image and we give it this random ID. And as you can tell from this ID, it's going to be really hard for me to memorize this ID because it's very long. But what I can do, I can tag this ID with something more manageable. So if I go back, docker build, I just put tag, I call it demo app, and run it again. Oh, I shouldn't have uppercase. Okay, so now you can see that this image that had that ID is now being tagged with demo app, which makes it really easy for me to utilize. So what I'm going to be doing right now, uh, I'm going to run my application uh, through Docker, but it's not going to work because I don't have a database connected, but at least I will be able to see that it's actually able to see like the normal .NET run that is listening to the sport and it's running. So let's see this right now. How can I run this through Docker? So I'm just going to put Docker run basically. And then I'm going to specify the port that I'm going to be connecting with my application. I'm just going to connect through port, port 8081. And I'm just going to specify the environment variable, which is going to be the ASP, not core, underscore URLs. And I'm going to tell it that it needs to listen to port 80 inside the container. Because if we know uh, when the container is actually running on the .NET, it's going to pick up a port 5000 something plus. So that way we're actually telling it that it needs to listen to port 80. And that way I don't have to hard code that inside my application. And then all I'm going to say is going to specify the uh, application uh, tag that I have just added for my Docker image. And now we can see that my application is actually running on port 8080. Uh, 8081. So if I go right now to my web browser, it's not going to work, but let's see what's going to happen. If I go here and put localhost port 8081, uh, we're not going to see anything. It's specifically, if I'm going to put drivers, we're not going to see it says unable to establish connection. If I come back to my, uh, we're going to see nothing has happened here. And something else I want to mention, oops, I did something wrong before. That's why it's not working. I needed to map this to the port 80, which I didn't do. Okay, now let's run this again. Uh, first of all, before we check it again, I just want to uh, emphasize that this environment is running in production. So 
this means that we're not going to be able to see Docker uh, Swagger because here what we have done is if application is only in development mode, we are able to see Swagger and Swagger UI because this is in production, we're not going to be able to see it. I can disable this and build this image again if I want to see Swagger, but we can do this later if we want. So right now, I'm just going to go back to my application and I'm going to call this again. And now we can see we got a different response. With, but if I go back to my application, we're going to see a lot of errors because basically there is no database connected, which is exactly what we want. The application is running, but whenever we do any connection, it's not going to work. And we can take a look at what's, what's saying here. It says that there is no database connection because if you remember, we left the app settings, uh, the connection string inside our app settings empty because we want to inject, inject this through Docker Hub. So once we have done that, now what we're going to be doing is we're going to be creating something called a Docker Compose file. And a Docker Compose file here, we can think about it as an orchestra orchestration file. What does this mean? Because right now we have a web API, a web application. And then we're going to have a database server that we want to run. So instead of uh, putting every single one by itself and trying to manage it uh, 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 remotely, not remotely, independently, a Docker Hub, uh, sorry, a Docker Compose file will allow us to put all of these services inside a single folder and run it with a single command, which basically allow us to actually do some dependencies between different containers with each other, and basically it will allow us to actually have uh, different services running simultaneously and we're talking to each other uh, in a way that we want to and that's what we want to achieve here we want to basically create a docker compose file which is going to first create our uh, database server and create a database that we want and once we have done all of that we want to actually connect to it through our uh, uh, through from our web api so let's stop this here now we can see it has stopped and what I want to do right now is let's create our Docker Hub, uh, sorry, our Docker Compose. So inside the root directory, we're going to create a docker-compose.yaml file. And here we can see that I have a new Docker Compose file. And here we're going to be actually creating it. So the first thing that I'm going to be doing inside my uh, Docker Compose file, I'm going to specify the version. And I'm going to be utilizing version 3.4. And then I'm going to start by spe specifying a networks. And then we're going to be discussing what networks are. And then I'm going to specify the driver. And we're going to say it's a bridge. OK. So what did I do here? So first of all, I specified the version of my document. Similar to everything, uh, Docker has different, Docker Compose has different, uh, Docker. Similar to everything, Docker Compose have different version. You can have 2, 2.5, 2.3, 3.0, 3.1, 3.2, 3.4, cetera. So we're going to be utilizing version 3.4 of our Docker Compose file. And then what we're doing is uh, we're telling Docker uh, that it needs to create a network between itself. And basically, that network is going to be responsible for having all of the containers running simultaneously inside this network. So it, it allows those containers to communicate much more easier with each other. So instead of having the, uh, every single container, because by default, the uh, containers are sealed from each other. They live in their own small walled garden and they are not able to see any other containers unless we specifically tell them that you're going to be on the same network as this other container so you are able to communicate with it. And that's what we're doing here. We're telling basically our, we're telling basically our application that uh, our basic our Docker file to create this network, so our database application, database server, and our web API will be able to see each other and communicate with each other. So that's the network we're calling the network dev, and this is YAML. So please uh, pay close attention to the spacing because if you mess up the spacing, it will not work. So make sure you follow exact same spacing. So now we're going to be going through the services, and the first service is going to be our uh, demo app. And we're going to specify the image that I want. And basically, if we remember when we built it, so let's do it again here, docker build dot, and we're going to dash T, and it's going to call a demo app. And once it does all of the builds, we can see this is the image that we have. We can copy it. We can just call demo app. I'd rather always take the full name. So first of all, we're going to put the image name. I'm going to put it here. And then we're going to specify it depends on what. So here uh, we're going to say it's going to depend on a database server which have not, which we did not create yet, but we're going to be creating it. So it depends underscore on. 
and here we're just gonna say it's gonna depend on our app DB, which is gonna be our database server. It's gonna be another service that we're gonna be creating. And then we're gonna specify the container name and we're just gonna call it app demo the services. We can call it whatever we want. Uh, let's call it demo app because it's all demo app. Demo app the services. And then once we have done that, we need to specify the ports that we're gonna be connecting to it. And I can utilize any ports. So I'm just gonna say, I'm gonna connect through port 80, 88 to port 80. And then once I have done that, I'm just gonna build the contacts here. I'm gonna say, for, in order for it to build, you can find the Docker, uh, the Docker file in the root directory. And then I can say it like the name of it, it's gonna be Docker file. So Docker file is gonna call Docker file because if we have multiple Docker files, we can have a Docker file. We can file have Docker. Excuse me. We can have Docker file dot dev dot prod dot staging dot whatever we want. But because here we only have one Docker file, we're just calling it Docker file. And this is for build. Now we want to specify the environment variable. And here we're going to specify first the connection string because as we said previously, the connection string is going to be automatically injected into our application. So here we are injecting it from, and here we're going to say connection, oops, strings, underscore, underscore, default connection. And then we need to specify the normal uh, Postgres uh, connection string. So we're going to start by user ID. All of this we're going to be creating, so don't worry. We're going to put equal Postgres. Uh, then we're going to specify the password, which is also going to be Postgres. Of course, in your real life scenario, you can change these. But for now, just to make it easy for us, what we're doing is we're just going to change. Uh, we're, uh, we're taking the default uh, implementation towards it. So then once we have done that done, uh, what we're going to be doing, now we need to specify the service that we're going to be connecting to. So we're going to say server equal and as we can see here it depends on appdb so that's the server that we're going to be utilizing app underscore db and then we need to specify the port and the default <coughs> excuse me the default port uh, for postgres it's going to be uh, 5432 and then once we specify the port we're going to specify the database that we want to connect to data base and we're just going to call it sample driver as a sample DB driver, anything we want. And then I'm going to say integrated security. Equal true. And lastly, if we're, we're going to specify the pulling mechanism that we have, I'm going to say it's going to be equal true. Okay. So now that I have created all of this, uh, if we're just gonna take a full uh, review on this, so we can see here that I'm doing is I'm creating the connection string, and if we notice, it's gonna be the same structure. So I have connections here as a high level and have default connection underneath. So that's what exactly what I'm doing here is I have the uh, connection string here on top, and then I have the underscore, underscore, it means that we're going one step lower and I have my default connection. Then I'm specifying my user ID, <coughs> excuse me and then I'm specifying the password then the Postgres as uh, the server which is going to be the server that I'm going to be creating the ports the database and the integ integrated security and the pulling so the next one is I'm going to be specifying is the um, environment or actually the port uh, that my application is going to be running on and it's going to be asp.net core underscore urls it's going to be equal to http forward slash forward slash plus I'm going to say it's going to be on port 80. So now that I have specified the environment, lastly, I want to specify the networks that it's going to be utilizing. Uh, it's going to be utilizing the dev network that I have created on top here. So now this is our first application, our first service. The second service that I'm going to be creating is going to be my database service. So it's going to, it's going to call app underscore DB. And here I'm just going to first of all specify the image. And the image is going to be the Postgres image, and it's going to be the latest one. And then what I'm going to be doing is I'm going to specify the container name, because basically we're going to have the container of our application running, and then we're going to have the Postgres container running. 
So we're gonna have two containers running, one as a data, data, database server, the other one is gonna be our web API. And we're just gonna call this app underscore DB. And then we're gonna specify the environment variable. And here we're gonna specify the uh, username, the password, so on and so forth. So we're gonna just say Postgres underscore user. It's gonna be equal to Postgres And then we're going to specify the password. Equal again, Postgres. And lastly, we're going to specify the database. And I think we called it sample. What did we call the database? Let's see, sample DB driver. And then I'm just gonna specify the ports that I want. So if I wanna connect to it from outside my container, uh, I'm gonna connect through 5433, three. but inside my container, I'm gonna write uh, connect to it through 5432. So that's a way for me to connect through different ports. And uh, let's see what else we need to do. We need to put restart as always, in case the database server fails, we wanna restart it. And now we want to specify volumes. And before we jump into that, let me explain what volumes are. So when a, when a container runs, uh, basically whatever information it stores inside that container, whenever that container shut down, it's lost forever. And basically containers do not, uh, uh, don't have long-term storage of uh, our data. So as long as the container running, whatever information it contains is going to be safe. But as long as it shut downs or it fails or uh, there's any problem where it crashes, all of this data is gonna go, it's gonna be disappearing and we're not gonna have access to it. So what's the solution here? Uh, luckily for us, uh, within uh, uh, containers, we're gonna have something called volumes. And volumes is basically like a uh, outside storage that the container can actually utilize in order for it to store all of the required information inside of it. So let's say I'm building a database server and I have created databases inside. So the actual server, the actual program is running inside the container, but the storage where it's actually communicating and stores all of this information is outside that container. And these storages outside the container are called volumes. So it's a way that we can actually communicate uh, from that container into uh, outside. It could be our machine. If it's on the server, we can put a, a storage, like a blob storage, or we can put an S3 file. We can put whatever we want, for example. And once we do all of that, what we're doing is we're basically, we are storing this information outside. So in case that container runs, whenever we pick it back up with the same configuration, we'll be able to find those files and utilize it. So that's one aspect. Second, it's in case it crashes, it can always find this information. And we're, don't, we're not gonna have any data loss because we're storing it outside the container so whatever the lifespan of a container is it's not affected within the data that it's actually utilizing so in order for us to utilize volumes it's going to be pretty straightforward so we're just going to specify the path for it and we're just going to put app underscore data forward slash var forward slash lib and that's a local uh, storage on my machine uh, i'm going to put postgres QL and I'm gonna forward slash. I'm gonna say it's in data. So the last thing, uh, last step here, I just need to specify my network, and it's gonna be similar to the one before. It's gonna be on dev. And now what I need to specify is I need to actually define that I have this uh, this volume outside. So all I'm gonna be doing here is I'm gonna put volumes, and I'm gonna specify. Or basically, I'm telling it that there is a volume here that you need to be aware of, and this volume name is gonna be app data simple as that. So here what I'm doing is I'm just specifying my volumes. I'm telling it that's going to be app data. Uh, why is it not happy? Oh, I think it's the, yeah. So spacing is really crucial as we can see here. So let's do a quick recap before we do anything else. So first things first is I created a version for my Docker file, Docker Compose, sorry. Then I specify the network where these two services are going to be able to communicate. Then I specify the services section where I defined first my web application, demo app. I told it where it can find the Docker image that it needs. What it depends on, it depends on the database server. I specify the container name, what's actually run, the ports that I'm going to be utilizing to connect to it. 
then I'm gonna tell it if you're gonna build it, uh, if you don't wanna use this image and you're gonna build it again, just use this context, which is mean the local directory, and for look for a file called Docker file, where you're gonna file all of the instruction for you to build this image. Then we have specified the environment variable where we have dynamically passed the connection string so it will be able to be picked up by our program.cs inside our application. And I specified the default uh, port number that the application we're gonna be able to listen to so it will match this one. And then I told it that it needs to live inside this network that I've created previously. The second one here is gonna be my AppDB, which is gonna be my database server. I just told it that it needs to utilize Postgres, the latest version. I gave it a name, AppDB specified the environment variable uh, in order for us to set up this database server, the username, password, and the uh, database. Then I specified the ports in order for me to connect to it. I specified uh, well, it's, it's, that it needs to restart always in case it fails. Specified the volumes that it needs to uh, use in order for it to store the data. And lastly, the network that it needs to live on. And here we can see finally specified the volume. It's very simple. So now that I have done all of that, you might think to yourself, okay, how can I run this? Very simple. So all I need to do inside my terminal, let's clear this up a bit. Inside my terminal, see how it's looking. Yeah, that should be fine. Let's make it a bit higher. Let's see. Okay. If I want to run it, or I'm in docker, dash compose, up, as simple as that. And we can see here it started doing a lot of stuff. We can see that it started to run. We can see that my AppDB is processed and we can see the process is complete. If I go up, up, up where it's in yellow, we can see that my application is also running. But right now we have a bit of a problem. Why? Because right, right now what I have is I have a database. I have a database server running, great. I have my, applica I have my application running, great. But I don't have a migration script inside my database, which is exactly what we need. So what I can do here, there's two options. What we can do is you can actually create, uh, update your uh, web API in order for it to do all of these checks manually. And when, whenever the application is running, it will check if the database exists or not. If it exists, it will check the latest version of the migration. And if it does, if it does not contain the latest version, it will automatically apply them. So that's one version. The other one is we can do it manually. So if you're interested in learning how to do the first option, uh, please comment down in the comments down below and we'll create a video to cover that. But for now, we're just gonna do it manually where we're gonna be updating the connection string of our application to connect to this new server that we have. And then from there, what we're gonna be doing is we're gonna implement a database update command manually. So first of all, I'm gonna open my database server. Uh, I'm gonna connect through it through one of my favorite apps. Uh, let me close this, let me bring it here, and let's close all of these. So inside my uh, database server, I'm not sure if it's clean. Uh, fortunately, I cannot zoom in this. It's a bit of a awkward application, but if I connect right now to that Postgres instance, I think you can see it. I'm just gonna specify here the port for it, which is gonna be 5443, and the password be specified, I think it was Postgres, yeah. And now if I put test connection, it says it's connecting to that database server. And if I click on finish, and if I open it up, we can see that I don't have any database except the default database server that Postgres has provided. So what I'm gonna be doing right now is all I'm gonna take is take this default connection string that I had before. I'm just gonna copy it here, open my app settings, update the old one here that we have, and update this uh, port. So here is gonna be a uh, local host because it's gonna be connecting through our application. And I'm just gonna update this port, save it, create a new version of my terminal, and then I'm oh. So now that I have updated my connection string, all I'm just gonna be doing is I'm gonna put dot .NET build. So now my application is building successfully. I'm just gonna put dot .NET EF database update. And that should basically allow me to create my database inside my database server. Perfect, now if I go back to DB Beaver and if I refresh here, I should be able to see my database. Now if I go back to edit again, edit connection and put the new database name, that's connection to it, it exists. If I click on okay, yes. If I come here and open this up, I can see my database table, if I open this up, I'm able to see the tables here, driver, if I open it up, view table, I'm able to see it. Okay, perfect. So now that I have, uh, I was able to do that, the next step is uh, I need to just delete this. I don't need it anymore. 
let's stop my application stopped okay now let's go back to my docker compose file and all i'm gonna do is stop the application i'm gonna put docker dash compose down now it's being completely removed and i'm gonna rebuild the entire thing so i'm just gonna put docker compose up dash dash build which means gonna rebuild everything for me and it's gonna make sure everything is running so we can see it's building it's running and now if all goes to plan if i open up my uh, api testing tool which is going to be insomnia and inside insomnia i'm just going to make sure that i'm connecting to the right uh, endpoint so if we go to our docker compose let's see here what was the uh, it was 8080 so i'm going to take this i'm going to go to port 8080 8088 sorry i'm going to click on send i should be able now to get my address here perfect if i could send that again i should see another uh, driver perfect third one and so on and so forth and we can see here that everything is being executed correctly against my database and if i go back here to my database table and if i click on view all data i should be able to see three records so if i click on data i'm able to see three records now the big test is if i stop this and as we can see it stopped and let me see if i want to make it turn it all down so i put it down got the compose down you can see everything is removed and now if i run this again and let's see what happened if i do the same i should be able to see four now perfect which means the data is being consistently saved so let's do a quick up the quick uh, summary of what we have done so far so first of all what i have done is i basically i created my web api i have configured it to work with postgres i created my migration folder uh, so I created my API DB contacts and then I created my migration, but I did not connect it to any database. Then what I did is I created a Docker file for my application, where basically I'm able to containerize it and utilize it inside my Docker Compose. Then I have configured, uh, created my Docker Compose file, where I have specified all of the steps that I need in order for me to, use, to run my application inside Docker. And then I created or utilized a version of Postgres inside my docker file uh, docker compose file so i will be able to connect to it through my uh, api db uh, so my web api and then what i did after that i did the manual setup of setting up the database and creating it so once all of that has been done uh, i was able to test it and make sure that the web api uh, which is running inside docker and my postgres which is running also inside docker are able to connect with each other and basically i'm able to actually have these two working simultaneously together so that's what i have done uh, here so the docker compose file was basically able to uh, have orchestrate my web api and my postgres so they were able to communicate so i hope you like this video uh, please like share and subscribe if you do and uh, if you'd like to support me please consider supporting me on patreon and if you'd like me to uh, jump into any uh, topics further in much more details regarding to postgres regarding docker regarding dotnet and docker uh, so on and so forth please let me know in the comments down below as well please ask any question that you might have in the comments down below uh, thank you very much for watching this video and have a great day